computer there putting in progress hi how are you everybody i'm alex bennett and this is of course our monday show what we call our pop-up and uh we uh, you know it's a, a fun show i think okay so anyway uh, but we got a lot of people waiting again today as usual this is a very popular show uh, a lot of people like to call it and let me make sure these are all real people there we go and then i hit admit all and they will start popping in here there they go there's charlene uh hi charlene good hi to see you. charlie wallace is here mm -hmm. uh, uh uh edward berger that's right that's right okay uh oh, hello paula hello how are you alex my old friend paula and there's uh len lafrisco ladies and gentlemen <laughs> len lafrisco near san francisco that's me okay. yeah how's it doing out there on the west coast any more of your biblical uh events <laughs> it is sunny today and in the 50s and by next friday it's expected to be in the 70s finally thank god really really <laughs> Here, no here, right now it's uh, I don't know, my watch is missing. Let's see, oh, 57 degrees here. They were saying that New York is the lowest snowfall they've ever had, like Le ever. Le le least snowfall this year. I mean, yeah. it, it, if somebody sneezed, it would be more snowfall. <laughs> <laughs> How bad it is. Yeah, you guys really got it. No, it didn't get anything. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, nothing. zero zilch. I mean, uh, uh, we had. You know, you know, you can look outside and there were flurries, but there was nothing that stuck to the ground. Yeah, what, no, what, I, what is it in Texas? It's 92 degrees oh, out right now. Shit, oh, no, no, no. Yes, sir, right there. Holy crap. <laughs> Boy, degrees. your governor has made that a living hell, haven't you? <laughs> you go from tornadoes last week to I know. <laughs> you know Don't like funny. the weather, just wait. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's god's wrath that's what i think all right charlie before before we move away from charlie i, I don't read binary anymore what, what was that? <laughs> it says if you know what this says you are <laughs> one too it's binary for geek g-e-k oh, beautiful. beautiful thank you <laughs> he has the he has the only shirts i know of that you have to actually interpret Mine just say 1939 on all of them. You know, you need, you need a degree to read his shirts. <laughs> I would say, well, you know, he was an astrophysicist. Yes. Yeah. I would love to hear about that. It, it, no, it, 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 you did it's some work in that story. You did some work as an astrophysicist, right? Yeah, I did. I taught for three years. So. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't work as an astrophysicist. Well, in graduate school, yeah, I did research for my professors. Yeah. I was out of McDonald's Observatory. Really? Yeah. The, yeah. the fascinating thing about him is that he was recruited by the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> and part of what they wanted was that astrophysic part of you, right? I mean, yeah, because they wanted, and plus they knew they knew that I'd taken Russian and they wanted me to, to read Russian scientific journals and keep track of their progress. Well, that sounds for me. <laughs> but you turned down the job. I turned down the job. Yeah. And why did you turn it down? Because I wouldn't be able to look my friends in the face and say I work for the CIA. Oh, I thought it was because you got a better job with the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians offered you more money. <laughs> oh, they probably would have. <laughs> I would imagine. Hello, Mandy. Hi. How you doing, kiddo? How are y'all? Yeah, well, y'all's fine. You know, <laughs> I love that term, y'all. I just think it's it's one of the most. A lot of people say, "Oh, those people in the South are so uncivilized. They are so dumb. They're so stupid." Man, I'll tell you, y'all makes up for it all for for all y'all because it it is such an all encompassing word that we don't have one for it up north, except maybe use guys. You guys. <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't like that. Yeah, you got a problem with that. <laughs> You guys got a problem with that? The, the other one I love to bring up is uh, when I was living in Texas, uh, somebody was talking about some women and stuff, and he said, Ms. So-and-so and Ms. So-and-so and Ms. So-and-so, M-I-Z. And I said, why do you use Ms.? 
And they said, well, we use Ms. because you don't know whether it's a married woman or a non-married woman, and Ms. covers it all. And I thought, that's very bright. You know, that's a really great thing to do. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, uh, Gloria Steinem comes up with a magazine called Ms. MS, <laughs> and she acted like she had invented it. Mm. You know? But the Southerners were, you know, way ahead of her. Uh, and, and of course, a perfect example of smart and decent uh, in the South is Mandy. <laughs> 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 why are we laughing wait, wait. there was a there was a quote that tennessee williams had about this actress marion davies who had married william randolph first no not married him but lived with william randolph first for all of her life for all of his life and uh tennessee williams said because she was trying to say that marion davies was a very decent person gave a lot of money to charities and she was just a good person and Tennessee Williams said, Marion Davies made up for the rest of Hollywood. <laughs> and I think we could say that about Mandy. She makes up for the rest of Georgia. Okay. So yeah, yeah. don't even get me started on the nut job we got from the state. So <laughs> which nut job? Um which Marjorie 60 yeah. minutes. Mar Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah. You know, 60 minutes, didn't she last night? Yeah. Oh yeah, I want yeah, I watch that. You know, wow. I really, I uh, what was it? Le Leslie Stahl was doing the interview. She yeah. wouldn't let her get away with anything. Nope. She, she was really that. good at it. You she know, was rolling her eyes at stuff, man. She was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've never seen a sixty-minute interviewer be that aggressive against the person they were interviewing. Yeah, and I think after the first couple of minutes, she couldn't take it anymore. You know, it was just so. Off the off the, off the grid. Crap, she's so bad. Wow. Yeah. yeah. She's sick. She came out and accused Biden of being a child molester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Democrats are pedophiles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He he at least waits till they're fifteen. So you know, I mean. <laughs> He wasn't uh, no, but, the one going into the dressing room at the Miss Teen America, whatever pageant. Well, here, here's what really gets me, okay? And again, this isn't really political. This is just observational about the media. It's just gossip. But do you know what the big news is now they're carrying on CNN and, and MSNBC and what? Fox, I suppose? The president, uh, Trump, the former president, arriving at the airport. Yeah, he's going down the and, and they're going, they're going, right he's now. going down the he's going down the tarmac and now he has just passed the Cinnabon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean they're doing that kind of thing. You know? Oh now he's tra and then you look at him traveling, the shots of it, them following him traveling into Manhattan, which is even boring if you are traveling into Manhattan. <laughs> right? I don't think he's ever driven by a Cinnabon, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. And he <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he he's driving, and it looks like the OJ chase. There's oh, a white does. car in front of them, which probably has nothing to do with the entourage, and then all these black cars chasing that car. So it looks like it looks like OJ all over again. Eight black cars. Eight black oh, cars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how much this is costing New York City? Yeah. yeah. You know how much? Yeah, but the entertainment value is good, so it's all right. Listen, it, it <laughs> pro it's probably even more expensive than when we were protecting Trump, Trump Tower for four years. Mm. Well, they're going to the, Trump Tower now. And the city of New York spent $200,000 a week? Jesus. To protect it? I mean, come on. But know? the money, some of the money was going to Trump because he was, they were staying in his hotel. Well, no, no, that's that's the Secret Service. That's what I meant. Right, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. was charging them over. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. He, he, he jacked up the charge five that's times, right. I think it was. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Five times as much as normal. Yeah. Jesus. My co-workers come to Manhattan for spring break. She took her 12-year-old son, her and her husband, and she was like, I'm so mad. The one week I'm finally going to New York and I wanted to take a picture in front of Trump Tower doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, Wait a minute, I gotta see. I gotta see who this is. I may have to actually hit uh, hit uh, uh, hit close out. Reject. On. But it says Candace 
has changed it. I get, but that could be what's his name? That could yeah. Be, oh yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Because I'm very paranoid about this kind of stuff. I agree. Let I haven't said the real name. There he is. Oh, yeah, there Why he did is. you change? He changed it. You should yeah, use but... your real name because I, this panics me these days. Oh man, I'm so sorry about that. My wife uses the Zoom account for the tech company she's building, and uh, it it changes sometimes. Sorry about that. Well, tell her to screw her tech. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey man, I'm hoping that she retires me with this thing at some point. I mean, come on, let's uh, let's not go that far. Retires you with what? With he changed it. If that oh. thing when it when it goes, oh, well, I can I can change it for you here, but then <laughs> it'll change back. <laughs> no, yeah. I gotta yeah, I gotta. We'll change the settings. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, something I wanted to question you about because I kind of worried about it the other day. Uh, me. Yeah, your thing, the Letterman podcast. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 they could make you stop using that. Uh, yeah, they potentially could. Yeah, and because, I have known because, that right from the start. Because there is a confusion factor there to people. They might see Letterman podcast and think that Letterman has a podcast. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't it be better if you called it Letterman Tribute Podcast? Um. Well... Mark Malkoff did the Carson podcast for a long time. Um, but Carson, five, six was, years. Carson was dead. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a difference. Maybe. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the folks at Worldwide Pants have been very, very friendly to me well, up that's to this nice. point. Yeah, that's nice. But those were individuals. You yeah. know, Dave looks at it and goes, that's not my podcast. Stop it. Yeah, then you could. To, you'd have to go back to every show and eliminate the term Letterman podcast and everything you've done. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple technicalities to it. The first technicality, it's the Letterman podcast with Mike Chisholm. Um, so, you know, that's 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 one of them. Yeah. Um, the second one, though, is Dave is well aware of what what we're doing. And um, and and I mean, I, I, I exchange messages with. Um, somebody who speaks for him quite frequently. And so um, there's no- well, All I'm saying is I just, yeah. I just worry about it because at some point, just because right now they're saying, oh, it seems like it's okay. We have no problem right. with it. Uh, all they have to do is suddenly have a problem with it. And then we'll cross that, uh, hey, there we go right here. We'll cross that bridge <laughs> when we come to it. <laughs> I mean, I- Quite frankly, if you want to do the Bennett podcast, I'd uh, sue the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my play here, and and I mean, like Rick was, Rick knew about this and and and, and was encouraging me about it. Um, my play is that by you know, man, if I had my way, by the end of this year, I would actually be under the employ of Worldwide Pants with this thing, and it would oh. actually be a, a an official. Like, and I've made no bones about that. Like, you know, I talk about that in a lot of episodes. The goal is, is that we're going to be official. Um, and I'm, and I, and I do check in with them. I don't think certain episodes. I don't think that'll happen. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, you not. know, because I mean, Don Giller, who yep. I hope calls the show today. It'd be nice if you called. Me too. Him. Yeah, me too. Uh, Don Giller uh, for years has been putting up, you know, yep. the Letterman shows. And finally, Letterman decided to do it himself. And yep. I think they, they hired Geller, but uh, they haven't used him really. I As a consultant. Yeah. And um, yeah, here and there. And and if I if if I had my way, um, and again, this is this is part of the I, I'll the, bet you, I'll bet you he never they never bring you on. Yeah. That, you know, I, I think you have to do what you're doing because you love it and yep. just do it on that level. And they know that I will continue to do it for that very reason that I do love it. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, yeah. um, like if you look at what Conan has done, I mean, he, he signed a $150 million deal or hundred million dollar deal with Sirius for content worldwide pants is in a very unique position and they could do something like that as well if they wanted to. Um, and, 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 and so I don't think they know, want to, I don't think there's a need to, I think Conan O'Brien is not particularly doing well. Okay. 
And so anything like a, like a serious XM would say, Hey, I want to do a podcast. I want to take on your podcast. Sure. Yeah. You can have it. We'll do it. How much do you want? 50 cents an episode. Fine. We'll do it. You know, but in the case of Dave, I mean, he owns a lot of material. that's very, very uh, important. And he yes. doesn't need to share it with Sirius XM, you know, and he doesn't want to do a podcast, which he'd have to do on a regular basis. And that's not his idea of a good time anymore. You know, right. I mean, he doesn't even do stuff on a regular basis on his own, you know, YouTube. Uh, Mike, um, Brian Neary just instant message. He wants to know what they did with the original set from the Letterman show. It was in the, it was in the dumpster yeah. the next day. You know, from, wow. from late night, um, there is a guy named uh, uh, Mark Commissar who has uh, the original late night set. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he is, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if he's going to be putting it up for auction or whatever. He also owns the Carson set um, wow. as well as the cheers. <laughs> he has the cheers bar. Um, All I know is I, there is a, there's a video of, of that set in a dumpster. <laughs> Late really? show. You're talking late show, which is late this show. is where that bridge. Oh, you're talking about late from night. That. You're talking about yeah. late night. We're talking about late night. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't much of a set, though. It was just you know a few little flats, and that's it. You know. Yeah, it was. It was. It was very. Uh, the, the 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 late show set was way more encompassing with layers and all sorts of uh, great stuff. Well, they and had yeah, it, literally had that. Literally had that in the dumpster the day yep. after. That's yep. Crazy, right? Okay. So, yeah 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 uh that's abhorrent as far as i'm concerned I, i'm i'm so glad this bridge got well, saved it's and not abhorrent that's what happens in television you know yeah. you're, you're you're not doing a show tomorrow you you move you've moved out we got to move colbert in right as soon as you're through we're tearing down this set and getting it in the dumpster and getting ready to refurbish this studio you yeah know? and that's television you know yep. It's also, you know, after a while, uh, uh, Letterman, who's Letterman, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, that's the way to all television is. That's where all show business is. I told you about, you know, the five uh, steps of, uh, of show business is the first one is who's Alex Bennett. The second <laughs> one is uh, um, let's hire Alex Bennett. <laughs> the next one is, hmm. Get Alex Bennett. <laughs> the next step is in show business is get an Alex Bennett type. <laughs> and step five is finally who's Alex Bennett. <laughs> you know, so I mean that's that's the way show business goes. It's a very fickle business, you know. Yes. What do you well, our show exists so um, the 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 who's David Letterman and and company because it's about the company uh, will be a little bit slower because of our show. That's 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 our goal. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just all things get forgotten. Yep. All things get forgotten. I mean, I I, I kept thinking about. Uh, I mean, I I've t I earlier I mentioned Marion Davies. How many here knew who Marion Davies was when I mentioned? See, and who and how old are you people? <laughs> oh, I'm six. I'm 68. See, that, that's yeah. that's the problem, and and the problem is nobody should have ever forgotten Marion Davies because she was really terrific, uh, but they did, and uh, there was a time in this country where there everybody knew who she was the the number one star in Hollywood at one point, you know. So I mean, all things fade with time, and we and somehow. Most people allow them to fade. I mean, the one thing I loved about Shecky is he wouldn't let any of that fade. Yeah. You know, and and we need more people who, who want to keep talking about the past and what went on in the past and making it interesting and doing documentaries on them. But, you're, you know, if I said, I want to do a documentary on Marion Davies, they'd all turn around and go, I'm so, who's she? What, what was that about? Oh, she was the biggest star in Hollywood in 1925. They go, yeah. Oh, so how many years ago was that? Yeah, that's almost a hundred years ago. So I mean, it, it's just uh, people forget, and uh, there I'm, I'm sure if I go out here on the street and find some kids and say, name the Beatles, the Who, oh, the Beatles. That's right. That's Remember right. The Who, the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles. Uh, you know, it, it, it's funny. I just had um, 
his name is Glenn Borders, and he was the head of special effects for the Late Show. So when something needed to be blown up, he would blow it up, and 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 all sorts of all sorts of other stuff that Practical he would special effects. Absolutely, and 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 that show kept him busy, and and we had all sorts of stories about. Um, this is the type of thing that you're talking about. You hope that there are people out there who want to continue this. This is what I want to do for whatever reason. I don't know why, but he's telling stories about how they made Dave's desk vibrate and how they did all these other things for, for, for different bits and gags. Um, he's actually a Broadway guy as well. And he uh, created a show uh, called the dark star from Harlem. And it's the, the story about Josephine Baker. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, uh, and okay. So you know who that is, right? I know. Uh, how many here know who Josephine Baker was? Oh, I love that. So it's many interesting. It's interesting that there, there's a little more people who remember Josephine Baker. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, um, you know, he built a Broadway show, uh, that's going to hopefully go back. COVID kind of stalled it. Um, but it's going to hopefully go back into production next year, um, celebrating and telling that story again. And guys like Shecky, I think that's one of the reasons I bonded with him is, is, is keeping these things, these stories alive, I think is so important. And, uh, yeah, I just came off a podcast talking to him about that, that, that very thing. Yeah. I'm glad this is why I'm glad you do this, man. Like it's, it's, it's good to keep this going the way that you are. I love it. Why you want to see if I'm still alive this week? <laughs> That's all the, the only thing that this show is really about is is Alex Bennett still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Which of course then you know uh, leads me to uh, where where is it? Hold on a second, I got to find it. Which leaves me with, uh, yeah, with oh well, excuse me, I got to stop something here. Which leaves me uh, with uh, this, which is. Um, Alex Bennett is still alive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and Gilbert isn't. Yeah, oh, oh. Oh, we miss Gilbert. We miss mm -hmm. Gilbert, most unusual act in the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I tell the story, I love telling this story. One day, I'm walking down the street here in New York City. On, I think I think it was on uh, uh, Sixth Avenue, and all of a sudden, from across the street, I hear this voice saying, uh, "Saying, <laughs> Alex Bennett is still alive." <laughs> <laughs> from across the street, Gilbert is yelling this at me. <laughs> you know. uh, I miss I miss him not saying that to me at least once a year when we go to a New Year's Eve party or a Christmas party, mm. a friend's house. So, but uh, no, once they're gone, they're gone, you know, and people don't really remember them as much. I mean, I, I can't think of any major star from the 50s, you know, think about the stars from the 50s, time when you guys all grew up, okay, 50s or 60s. Nobody cares about them anymore. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give you an example, a real life example that I think everybody here, because I think I am the younger, I'm the younger person. I, I might be the youngest here. Um, oh, Letterman, was on, <laughs> Letterman was on Dak Shepard's podcast last week and a conversation about Paul Newman sprouted up. Now I know Paul Newman, well, sort of from the sting. I know him from uh, the hustler. Okay. But I don't know Paul. I Newman know him from the silver chalice. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I don't know Paul Newman the way that, that 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 folks that are 10 or 15 years older and above than me know Paul Newman. And it was very cool to hear Dave talk about Paul, you know, to Dax, who's a little closer to my age. I I love that. Um, I for whatever reason, it gets my entertainment synapses firing in my brain. And so you weren't that at your age, you you weren't that aware of Paul Newman. I knew that my parents you know, revered you know. the hell out of him. I knew that, but he wasn't my Tom Cruise, for example. Tom in the, in the oh, house, give like, me a break. Wait, 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 wait. Paul Newman is can't even vaguely be uh, compared to Tom Cruise. This Tom is why the Cruise? this is why it's oh, this is why it's important. Eh. <laughs> but I to say uh, Newman was my is my Tom Cruise. It, 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 it's an insult to Tom uh, to uh, Newman. Mm. I just tried to pick the biggest movie star in the world out of the air and 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 use that as the example. And because they were in a movie together, that's the only reason why I, I mean, used Tom him. Cruise is my Paulie Shore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> By the way, we've been watching, Marjorie and I have been watching the um, Larry Sanders show. Oh, and, I love that and, show. And just absolutely yeah. in awe of how perfect that show was. And so mm. ahead of its time. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. 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 And then we watched mm -hmm. the documentary that uh, Judd Apatow did on it. The two-parter? Five, five yeah. hours. No, so four, good. Four and a half hours. It, it, uh, <laughs> uh, about Jeez. Gary Shandling. Yep. A very complicated human being. Yeah. And uh, it, it, he, it, that, that show is just, when I, we look at it, it still stands up. It's you still could, fresh. It right now, and you would say, outside of the fact, there are a few people, a lot of people there, I say to her all the time, dead, dead, yeah. <laughs> dead, <laughs> you know. But uh, uh, it's, it's still, brilliant. It's, it's brilliant. brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, here's a little piece of trivia. Uh, the guy who was on both the very last Larry Sanders show and the very last Late Show with David Letterman, Jim Carrey. Hmm. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Carrey was in the top ten for Letterman, and then he was also the 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 marquee guest for the very last Larry Sanders show. Really. It wasn't much of a marquee yet. Well, at that time, how big was he? I'm trying to see. He was huge. That was when he was, was coming he off was... Ace Ventura, The Mask, mm -hmm. Dumb and Dumber, and he became oh. the $10 million man. That was yeah. a big deal okay. back then. Okay. All right. Okay. I try. See, I have a hard time figuring out exactly where all that space, because when I look back on it, these shows were done in the 80s. Okay. How many years ago was that? 50. Yeah. yeah. And so when you say 40. Jim Carrey star, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to think, was he a star in the 80s? Or was it's probably mid 90s for this one. 97, 98. That was Gary. That was uh, Larry Sanders. But Larry Sanders. No, I think ended. Um, um, uh, well, I'll figure it out later. I'm, you know, but it's amazing how time passes and all of a sudden you're an old fart, you know. And and all of a sudden somebody goes, oh, that's Larry Sanders. Oh, you know that show's forty years old or fifty years. How old is it? But it's so fresh. I mean, that's what's so great about watching it again. It's what you it's call so an ever, what you call an evergreen. Absolutely. You know, and that's what you it ended in ninety eight. Ended in ninety eight. Yeah. Ended in ninety eight. Ninety two to ninety eight. Yeah. Yep. Really, I thought well, it was. In what the was 80s. the guy that that that, start, that was on the show with him that was uh, he was later in Transparent. Uh, yeah, um, um, yeah, Jeffrey, Tambor? Jeffrey Tambor. You're talking about Tambor, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Jeffrey yeah. Tambor, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was brilliant. Also brilliant. Was brilliant. The Hank, only thing hey was, now. We're now into the fourth season, and all of a sudden, one of the characters disappears. And that's the girl, woman who played Linda Doucette, who played Darlene, which mm -hmm. was uh, Hank Kingsley's assistant. Yep. And that's the year. That he fired her, yep. Uh, because they broke up. They've been a they had been a couple for like seven years, and she she had to leave. He didn't want to have any kids. He didn't want to, you know, wasn't he couldn't commit to getting married. And apparently they broke up. And then she learns she's been dropped from the show. Well, she filed a suit, got a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, for sexual harassment, you know, mm -hmm. she was dropped from the show because he and she broke up. And that is not a reason to fire somebody from the show. You know, so. We just had Bill Carter on the Letterman podcast um, last week, and he he wrote The Late Shift. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how uh, that that show and people who were on that show, Gary included, would come up to him and say, "Oh, we're just blatantly ripping off, ripping your book off and putting it right into the show." They literally wrote the show with some of the anecdotes and stories that happened in that book. Um, oh my gosh, do I that, that that is such a good show? Which show? The Larry Sanders show. Oh, the Larry uh, Sanders. Show. Really? Yeah, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. so fresh watching it again. Hmm. But it, it, you know, well, that's what you, you know, that's what you, that's what you go for in this business is a show that will be an evergreen that you can show 40, 50 years later. I mean, I think Seinfeld still holds up yep. after all these years, yeah, I think so. but it's, it's getting less audience as the years go on because people go, oh, I've seen every episode. I can, in fact, I can, I can even say them by heart, you know, but I mean, Sander, uh, uh, Seinfeld 
pretty well. If you watch one today, it, it it's still pretty much an evergreen. It, it's as fresh today as it was when it was done, except they're using dial telephones. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the only thing. Yeah, push buttons. That on. that episode of comedians and cars getting coffee with Shandling and Seinfeld was was fantastic as well. If you're going to watch that documentary on on Shandling, highly recommend the comedians and cars getting coffee as well because that was only a few months before Gary died. Yeah. 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 So it, it it really was, you know, it's a really good show. It's a really good show. Uh and uh anybody else watching anything that's interesting? We just finished I, your honor with uh with uh, Brian Cranston. That was yeah. very good. That this year was the last year for that. Yeah, it's only two seasons, but it was a very good show. I'm glad it only went two seasons because if it went to a third season, it would have it, there would be no steam left. We were trying to figure out where they would have gone with it, and yeah, you're right. Yeah, in fact, at the end, they just he just walks back to prison. Yeah. Which, yes. How did you take that? Did you mean he was going back into prison? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It seemed odd because would you walk into a prison? You walk into a police station. I, I didn't. I wasn't sure. Well, I, I think. I think Trump will. <laughs> you know, uh, yes, Mandy had her hand up. Oh, I was just going to say, if you want to watch a uh, a show about time travel that's completely implausible, on the Hallmark Channel. Hallmark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Give me a break. I, had, I know. I had. <laughs> <laughs> I had a coworker tell me about it, and I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot, and. Um, I thought it'll be one season. Yeah, I didn't even realize it's multiple seasons. I was like, really? But it's, oh my God. And now I'm sucked into it. I got to find out what happened. But what's the name of the show? The Way Home. It's Andy McDowell. Okay. Well, and the I mean, thing that is, cracks me up is that the time travel part, they're going back 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So all the actors that are in the present time, are, when they go back, when you're in, 1999 or it's not really like 25 years when they go back they're all played by their actors <laughs> except for Andy McDowell, except for Andy McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> so like what they do with her because like obviously she's now I guess pushing 60 she might be already 60 I don't remember how old she is um I mean I love Andy McDowell but yeah she's gray very still very pretty but when they go back to the old time they, you can tell they do like a soft focus, you know, on her it face. It's like, focus. yeah. And it, she's got her dark hair and I don't really know. I guess they just did a temporary color on it. Cause you know, she's got like salt and pepper hair now. Um, but I just thought that's so glaringly obvious that they just didn't get another actress to play her. Well, you see, they paid a lot of money for her. She's an executive about, producer. So, you know, they weren't willing to say, well, now we're not going to use you because we're now back in the past and we <laughs> hired another actress to play you. No, uh, you know. But I just crack myself up because I'll be sitting there watching it, and they'll do something just so, just so. Show any good? I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm watching a show about time travel. What do I expect? Is it the, is the show any good? I mean, I, like I said, there's some parts of it, you know, because I'm a woman, so it's just, you know, it's got some emotional parts to it, that, you know, like the. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to watch it to understand. It's Hallmark. Really? Hallmark Channel, the way home. <laughs> I have to go back to 1950 to watch the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> I used to roast my ex-husband watching that channel all the time. I told him that I was going to take his man card. <laughs> I love Hallmark movies. Give me a break. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. Um, but it's just funny because I don't know if y'all watched that show. I'm trying to remember what it was called. I believe it was on Netflix. It was called made. It, it was like a series with um, about a girl that was a mate. Like she worked at cleaning houses and it was a very gritty show. And Annie McDowell was in it, played the mother and was so good. This is just so yeah. different. You know, this is just so Hallmark channel, you know? It's, yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, uh, we were, we're the thing. The only thing we really like right now is what uh, Perry Mason. I love Perry Mason. Mm -hmm. Very good, very love good. Her. And then we're watching Succession too, but I never. Uh, 
show. I never do liked you, that show. Do you guys like Kiefer Sutherland? Because I just started watching one last I night called watching the Black that. Marjorie doesn't like it. I like I don't it. like him. I watched the first episode and I'm already lost. <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna have to rewatch the whole first episode. What's yeah. the name of Kiefer's new show? What is it? Called Rabbit, Rabbit Hole. Oh, Rabbit Rabbit Hole. Yeah. Yeah, it's on. Uh, you have to. Where'd you watch Paramount. it? On a Paramount Plus, right? Yeah. 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 How, how many have, you know, we have all these services. How, yeah. many have, how many have more than four of them? Do you include cable? <laughs> no, no, not including cable. I'm talking about, you know, Paramount Plus, uh, Disney Channel, Netflix. Hulu, I guess Hulu. I have. Do you, can, you don't count YouTube TV? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't count you. Oh. I, guess I, have I have three four. plus cable. Yeah, plus I have cable. four. Okay, um, because uh, yes, uh, Charlene, how many? Five. Oh, I I don't know. We have probably all of them because all my kids have them and their friends, and we're just got yeah. all their <laughs> passwords, so we have everything. Yeah, that's Wait, me. Yeah. I, I have Hulu Plus, which yeah. gives me all the local channels and all the cable channels. I got rid of cable, right? Mm -hmm. And with that package, you also get Disney and ESPN Plus. So I get I'm getting Disney as part of that package. And then I'm getting HBO Max free because I'm with AT and T. Mm -hmm. okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. If you because I paid for that to watch White Lotus. Yeah, well, if you have your AT and T, if you do you have an AT and T phone? No. Okay. You can go to at and T's. I only learned this by going to at and T one day, and it said, "Here, click here and get uh, get uh, a, get a free." HBO it's like Verizon did free. the same thing with Disney. They gave me a six month free to Disney, but I'm like, I don't watch it. Do you watch no. anything on that on Disney? Yeah, well, I love yes. Disney. Mandalorian. I really like Mandalorian. Uh, and uh, before I, I'm watching most of the Star Wars stuff, which is pretty good yeah. on there. And uh, they do some nice documentaries on the making of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like Disney. It's okay. You know, I, I, I think if you have a kid in the house, it's a, it's a treat for them. You know, definitely. My kids watched it. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, I just, uh, uh, we got rid of, what did we get rid of? We got rid of the table. No, no, no. We got rid of that. <laughs> but we also got rid of stars. We don't want to have stars. And we got rid of, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, MGM Plus, it's called. Now. Because I, I don't see any reason to have it. Plus, it, the only thing they have that I like is the Godfather of Harlem. And that I can kind That's of, you. Get, I can get other ways, let's say. <laughs> so, Do you have the Peacock, Alex? No. You don't have the peacock? Okay. I had it for a while. I, I, there's no reason to have peacock. What do they got? NBC shows. Whoop de fucking do. <laughs> if you're a, if you're a wrestling fan, like we don't have peacock up here in Canada, but if you're a wrestling fan, peacock is essential down in the states. Yeah. Is essential? If you're a wrestling fan, yeah, because they stream the WWE network on it. Oh, do you, okay. you do you like That's the true. WWE? You don't like the other? What's the other one? The other league? AEW. AEW. That's my friend likes that league. Yeah. That. Well, uh, uh, I don't need to get any of the wrestling channels because I'm married. <laughs> and there's enough wrestling going on in my household. Every day. <laughs> and it's professional okay. wrestling, I might add. <laughs> How does my wife feel about this? Now, ladies and gentlemen, a few kind words from my wife about me. Go ahead. I don't like wrestling. <laughs> I expected two other words, actually. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, we went to a friend. We, went, uh, we have a friend, uh, Steve Weiner, and his wife, Lori. And uh, they're good, they're good friends of mine. But he's the guy who introduced me to Shaggy. Okay, so they, she invited us over to have lunch with him the other day. Oh, Anytime you go to, go to their place for lunch, it's amazing. Or, or dinner, or any, don't eat before you go <laughs> for about three days, yeah. because they start bringing out everything you can possibly imagine. 
And, and this time she even pulled back a little bit. And it still was, here comes the corn, here comes the corn fritters, here comes the, I mean, how many different things did she have? And we walked away, we were like bloated. It was too much, but it's always too much when, when yeah. we go to the I mean, place. And, and it's lovely. She's a lovely, lovely hostess and the food is terrific, you know, but yeah. too much of it. I put her up against Martha Stewart, man. She is unbelievable. Yeah, but I mean, but you, you, what you do is you, is you, uh, you go over there and you just better be ready to eat, you know. And and uh, I, I don't know that I ever complained about that before that there was too much food. But There's always like, too much like food. Marjorie, Marjorie there. cannot make. She says I'm making soup. Okay, you're making a nice soup. You have a couple of bowls of it. It'll be done with and it's very good oh it's tasty and everything no she's got these pots that are this big <laughs> and she starts making the soup and by the time she's through the pots are filled to the top <laughs> and now she's passing out the soup to everybody she knows she even has these little containers so when she makes soup she can give them to other people <laughs> she makes way too much soup and then I'm expected to keep eating it for dinner every day until the end of the week. <laughs> and even though some of it's wonderful, sometimes she makes a, a, a very good soup, a good onion soup or something like that. But geez, you know, one day, two days, maybe. <laughs> hey, tomorrow oh, we're having soup again. Okay. <laughs> but by Friday, we're still having soup again. <laughs> yeah. So Marjorie could be kin. It felt, it felt to be the same way in that way. This is your major complaint. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like pretty good to me. Cake. I like soup myself. <laughs> well, I'm Marjorie. It. What's your favorite soup? What's your What's the one you have the most pride about? Oh, I have so many. My one of my best is split pea with with sausage. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Your gumbo is delicious. My gumbo. Gumbo is very good. You know. I have my dishes. I make great ribs. Mm. I make a great chicken. Uh, what's it called? With the uh, balsamic vinaigrette all over it uh, and oil. And it's just delicious. Getting hungry now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I used to have a whole bunch of others, but when I, because when I was a bachelor, I took my wife left me and I couldn't, I didn't have any food to eat. <laughs> So I decided I'm never going to starve again. It was kind of like a Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> and uh, uh, I decided I would never be, be hungry again. And I taught myself how to cook, taught myself how to sew, how to do all the things. So I, if I didn't have a woman around, I could still survive. But, you know, most guys, their wife leaves them and they don't know what they got to go out and eat. You know, they can't cook for themselves. And I learned to cook for myself, you know. But Marjorie won't let me cook that much because she she takes that. Where's my violin? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I had to get dinner on. Had <laughs> <laughs> a boy. No, but we're almost through. How's everything in Kentucky? Uh, you you've got some problems down there, don't you? Well, Kentucky I mean, outside of it being Kentucky in general. <laughs> At least in the past, mm -hmm. when we've had a Democratic governor, there were ways to counterbalance Republicanism. But right now, our legislature has a supermajority in both the House and the Senate. So even if the governor wants to veto something, it'll be overridden. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're working on the most important thing for Kentucky government right now is a transgender bill. This, like, is, that's uh, the most this important bothers thing. the living daylights out of me. And I don't want to get too political on this show, <laughs> but how dare you disenfranchise a whole group of people in this in, in your state? And well, in, you're, in, you're not disenfranchising them; you're denying them needed health care. Yeah. Well, that's that's that that's pushing them to the side of the road. You yeah. know. I mean, how dare you do that to anybody? You don't. It's terrible. Just terrible. Um. And I don't know, they, they've they gotten used to the fact that there are gays in this world, okay? But now they can't get used to transgenders. That really bothers them. 
And if they had their way, they would do away with uh, gay marriage. Oh, really? Well, they're trying to in some states. Yes. You know, I don't know. How can you... How can you have something legal in one state and illegal in another? You know, that's the terrible part about statehood is that how can you, uh, uh, let's say, hey, and here in New York, gay marriage, come on, get married, you know, but then you move to Kentucky and they made gay marriage illegal, let's say, and you're, no, that's not, married, what you're not married anymore. No, that was that was why I can't, that's the, that, those are the kinds of things that go to the Supreme Court. That's why we have a, a legal marriage because the Supreme Court, when it was exactly. not right, exactly. So a yeah. state cannot a state cannot do away with it. That doesn't mean they're not pissed off about it. Yeah, right. But it's I the just, same way with abortion, legal in one state but yeah. not legal in the next state because yeah. because the court ruled against Roe yeah. and threw, and threw it out. Right. But I just, I just, drugs I, as well. I just don't understand about, you know, how can you do this to people? Period. You yeah. know, it's not just not. Those are assholes. Yeah, well, they, they don't care about the average American citizen. They do not average. care. Well, my question is the people who are making laws against this sort of thing, do they really care that they're making laws against this kind of thing? Or are they just trying no, to. It's a, power, it's a power thing. It's a power thing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But anyway, we're getting too political. It's to get so, more likes. It's I, to get like more likes. Did you guys did you guys see Chris Rock's latest uh, uh, HBO special? I just okay. yes. He was talking about addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was talking about addiction in this country. And he said, it's not opioids that we are addicted to. It's attention. How many <laughs> likes you get? How many likes you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but you're talking to a guy who's had that addiction all my life. <laughs> you know. Hey, I'm a, I'm on radio. Look at me. That was a very stupid statement to make, but right. it, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, oh boy, yeah, it's it's fun, and it has. Uh, are you watching TV at all, Marjorie? Is it on? Has yes, come, he arrived at his place. He arrived at his place. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question is, are you going to do a Gabnet special tomorrow and go down and record the crowd? Uh, well, I, I was thinking of going down there with a camera. Go do live, man. Hours. Do it. Oh, I'll watch that. When he when he mm -hmm. goes to the courtroom? Well, well no, I can't. Yeah, live, streaming on, live streaming on Facebook. Trump it's goes into the courtroom. It's 2.15 his arraignment. Have they decided whether they're going to let a camera in there? They Not haven't even there, decided if they're going to read all the accounts. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's uh, asking that the court not allow uh, cameras in the courtroom, and my my feel and they say oh because it'll it'll cause this problem it cause that problem, and I just think for for transparency I think we should be able to view any court process. I mean my little pissant court thing that we went through should have been available on a on a cable on a channel you know on somewhere <laughs> to go i mean no really because no yeah courtrooms like, should be public record public archived record. exactly this yep public access in aurora illinois wasn't that no but like on a site <laughs> somewhere like 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 it doesn't have to be a broadcast like c-span but all public records should be available i totally agree with you it's you, we're in a time you, and place where that could easily happen yeah. years, years ago i had a girlfriend who lived in sebastopol california a lot of californians will know where sebastopol is well there's only one californian here but you know where sebastopol is <laughs> and, and i would go up and we'd hang out and she the thing i loved about her in those days she had a satellite dish and nobody i knew had a satellite dish but she had a satellite dish and we would sit there we would watch jeopardy for instance a whole, they would run all five weekly shows in advance of it being on the local stations because they were feeding the stations the show mm -hmm. and then i would watch all of jeopardy and then when i go back to san francisco i'd have a friend over and jeopardy would be on i'd turn it on and i'd answer every question <laughs> <laughs> how did you do that well it, wait till final jeopardy <laughs> anyway one of the things is they had a channel i don't know where it was coming from this is what i enjoyed about uh, having a satellite back in those days it was an autopsy channel 
and they were performing autopsies. Wow. And I just went, this is the best television. <laughs> you know? Jeopardy yeah, those, and, and autopsies. Those big dishes were great because you could watch the, the local news feeds coming into the station, you know, from yep. the guys out in the field. You know, when they would when they'd screw up, they go, oh, fuck, okay, and they, you know, move on. <laughs> and you, could, you could watch them. You could also do things like watch uh, network television three hours early. Yeah, you watch the East Coast feed, yeah. Right. You watch yeah. the East Coast feed. That's the reason yeah. I originally got a satellite dish was to get the East Coast feed, but they stopped allowing that. Yeah. Oh, really? Terrific, because I was, you know, I, I was through watching all network television by 930 at night. <laughs> That's part of my cable package that I have here in, in Canada. I get the East Coast feeds and the West Coast feeds. Oh, oh really? Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, they stopped that here in America in uh, you know in in the democratic united states <laughs> Do Marjorie, didn't they have that in china it didn't, it didn't you see that in china where they, on the roof they had the the the, uh, the discs on the roof uh i they, did we see a lot of satellite dishes i don't remember i don't remember i did that was about five years i don't know what it's like now that was about five or six years ago i, I saw that Really, I thought that was pretty wild, you know. It was just like because uh, it was it was unofficial, but people were doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we got to go to China before she. Oh, yeah. yeah. When? Yeah, when it was nice. Uh, I mean, they're really a great people. They're wonderful people, and and everybody should be. It's just too bad everybody here should be allowed to fly to China and see what it's like, you know. But you can't do it anymore, really. I, mean, I imagine you could. I, I don't think there's any rule against flying to China, but I'm not going. And I want to go. I always wanted to go to Russia. Mm. I have no desire. I no. I I I would go there in a second, but not now. Not now. Not now. I get thrown. You know, I might get thrown in jail as a spy. That's right. You know. Uh, you know You're a spy. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, who do they? This guy they just arrested. Uh, Wall Street uh, Journal journalist. Yeah. Yeah. In spite of the fact he works for Rupert Murdoch, I don't think he should be in jail. (laughs) But they arrested him. You know, so I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to Russia. I'd I'd rather go to Ukraine, you know, right now Mm -hmm. than go to Russia. There must be some other spy that the Russians want. That's why they arrested that. Well, that's why it's kind of a bank they have for like getting their spies back. You know. Crazies, yeah, and uh, it, but it's just it's ridiculous. Just absolutely. maybe if Donald Trump would you trade right. him for Donald? Yeah. Trump? <laughs> trade Donald Trump for him, yeah, yeah. That's sad. By the way, he still is he still a Trump Tower? Is he could decide to go out to dinner and call? Uh, we'll probably have to back to his apartment. Huh? Yeah, KFC delivers through Uber now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, rem- you remember when he, he had some NCAA team in or whatever, the White House, and all he had was McDonald's hamburgers? You remember yeah. That? Yeah. That yeah. was disgusting. Can you imagine how <laughs> nasty those would be after a couple hours sitting on the table? <laughs> yeah. They're probably still there. Yeah, they might. Yeah. No, not if he got to them. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> well, he plans, I think, on, uh, on on getting all the publicity he can out of this thing. He's, He's getting it out. already. He has his own film crew. Yeah. What what are you saying, uh, Vernon? Money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He made five million dollars since they indicted him. Mm-hmm. And and um yes, he's got five million dollars, but I was telling Marjorie, so what does that buy you in a in election terms, in running for office terms? Is that is that two spots on NBC on Saturday Night Live? I mean, well, I don't know. If I'm not I, sure he's gonna be able to run any ads on Fox anymore. Really? Why? Are you kidding? Fox will take anything. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, they're still running ads for him. What I said was the press got him elected the first time. And yeah. it's the same thing again. Oh, he's driving out from the airport. Let's cover the car, the caravan, driving all the way into Manhattan. Mm. From LaGuardia. It's that, it's that kind of, was it LaGuardia? Yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of coverage. 
He got the guy elected in the first place, and he didn't have to pay with a his, with for. his face all the time on the screen. Yeah. Why? Well, listen, his face has been on the screen constantly since he was no longer president. I mean, this guy will not let a day. He gets up in the morning and goes, well, how do we get publicity? But they're complicit. Day? They're complicit. Like MSNBC, his face is on the screen yeah. all day, every day now. I mean, I'm I would not explain that just says Trump. I, 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 would, I would hire him in a second as my PR firm because <laughs> he I knows how to get publicity. Judge. What? I just hope the judge tomorrow put the gag order on this asshole. That would be amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, because I'm, then, because what they said was then if he violates it, they can take him right into jail and put him in a cell so that he doesn't uh, break the gag order anymore. So, yeah. Hmm. hmm. You know, well, you know he won't resist that. This you could know, get positively, you know, this could get positively delightful. Yes. Yeah. You know he won't be able to keep his mouth shut. There's no way he can shut the fuck up. There's no way. <laughs> well, it was, it was funny because Stormy Daniels is the first, first porn star in history to be paid to keep her mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'd take Karen Mandul any anytime. Who? The other the other one, the Playboy Bunny. Oh, the Playboy Bunny. Uh, yeah. She's very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Is she going to be part of the 30 indictments? Maybe. she. I think she's going to be. They say she's part of it. They keep mentioning Stormy Daniels because mm. porn star seems to ring really well in news. But there's 30 yeah. indictments altogether. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait till they read them all off. There's a 34, supposedly. 34? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, well, we're not talking about politics, folks. Right to Michael. Wait a minute. Cohen. Each you, one you, of those is an indictment. Which Trump, one? Every check Michael Cohen to reimburse him. How many checks did Trump write to Michael Cohen? Because each of those is a separate act. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Mm. well you know, I mean, uh, I, Michael I, you know, Cohen, another piece of work. <laughs> I'm not that fond of Michael Cohen. I mean, I wouldn't trust him. Okay. Uh, I, and I wouldn't want him as my lawyer. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, speaking of Michael Cohen, has anybody here watched the uh, the documentary on Netflix about the Pepsi points? The guy who wanted the Harrier jet for the Pepsi points back in the day. There was a they 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 said if you got so many Pepsi points, you get a Harrier yes. jet. Yes. <laughs> okay, and Michael so he, Cohen is big time in that documentary. He was the lawyer wow. that that guy hired back in the day. <laughs> wow. To go after Pepsi, and it is a. It's a pretty funny documentary. That's not political. If you want to see the antics of Michael Cohen, no, no. What, what happened? What's was, it called? Uh, uh, dude, where's my jet? I think, or where's my jet? Yeah, I think it's on. It's on Netflix. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah, but what happened? Did he get? He didn't get the jet, right? No, he he didn't get the jet. And and there was a moment where he had an opportunity to get a pretty big settlement from Pepsi, uh, from it, and. Uh, he wanted to go all the way. He wanted the jet. He, he wanted it. And, and so anyway, Michael Cohen was. Uh, Did they a, never have the jet to begin with? No, it was a joke. And that was the whole, the whole thing was that they're it was like, meant to be a is, joke. It was meant to be a joke. And uh, the first few commercials uh, were considered an actual legally. It was put to the Supreme Court, I believe, to see if this was actually constituting of an offer. And and they actually, to this very day, go back to that case and they argue it back and forth in, in, in law schools and things. So it's uh, it's pretty fascinating. But Michael Cohen's in there and he's a piece of work. It's crazy. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, all, all these guys who are lawyers, have you seen the latest lawyer he's got? Mm. The one that's on the guy every looks channel? like he's a mobster out of a movie, yeah. isn't he? It's true. He's on every channel, every minute. Yeah. And he's talking like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is not to say that every Italian is in the mob. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Want to clear that up just so I don't get. I resemble that remark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't Cohen. I apologize. It was it was Stormy's lawyer, Michael Avante. Avante. That's who it was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, it was that guy changed the whole story, but also yeah. a piece of work. No, no, no. We're oh, Avenatti, Avenatti, Avenatti. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's another piece of work. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, different, different piece of work. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Let's see here. Uh, Mike uh, Vernon Nunn says here, 
Hey everyone. Hey Mike. What did what did you write there? Oh, you're going to Vancouver. Just went away. He's going to Vancouver. Yeah, we decided on our 50th wedding anniversary we're going to do another Alaska cruise, but this time we're going out of Vancouver instead of Seattle. Oh, really? when are you there, bud? August 14th, through, and then we're on the ship until the 25th. Okay, well, I will because uh, I'm a couple hours away. But if I'm in Vancouver that week, let's do uh, let's do a beer. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, we come in a day early because we got to get used to the time zone change. Yeah, we we gotcha. we, we, we Marjorie and I have to take that Alaska tour. I hear that's Fun. just just spectacular. Yeah, yep. just spectacular. You guys should. Yeah. Huh? You should. Yeah. We oh, went no. last September and we thoroughly enjoyed it. We're going to do it again this time, except 10 days instead of seven days. Mm -hmm. We'll get to see more glaciers and may hopefully whale watching this time. How whale about a Mon Monday pop-up cruise? Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, you're going to go on this whole cruise and you I have free Wi-Fi. You wanna, you, you, and, and all you want to do is whale watching. Why do you want to watch that movie? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think I've run out of jokes. Okay. <laughs> Time to call it quits for now, but uh, it's really nice. I love the show. I love doing it on Monday. I thought I could do this a couple of days a week, and then I went, then it wouldn't be as good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of special. It's different. It than, is. You know, and, anyway. and you posted the way. first one the other day, which was super, super cool. Yeah, I put up the first one because I found it and I said, oh. well, this is worth watching. You and know. the first person that shows up is Len. Len's the first person on the pop-up show ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Yes, yes. And you're there. Is Mandy there? Yep, Mandy's there. Mandy's there. Check yeah. on it, but he comes later. Yeah. How about yeah. how about our, our, our good friend, uh, Edward Berger? Is no, he... I didn't come until later. No, Brian Neary was on it. Yeah. Um, I think Andrew was on it. Andrew Deutsch was on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember who else? I got to go back and watch that. Be kind yeah, of the very first one. It's super cool. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, it's really been. Oh, did I say goodbye to everybody yet? No. No. Uh, it, it, That's goodbye. Coming. Oh yeah. Goodbye to uh, uh, Charlie. Goodbye to Edward. Goodbye to Paula. Hope we see you soon here. Um. You should come by, some, be here for, for a Monday, and then you can just be sitting next to me. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, Len LaFirst goes down it. Andrew Deutsch is coming in to spend some time with us. Oh, good. Yeah. Yay. Uh, Marjorie Miller, thank you so much. What's for dinner? Soup? Leftovers. <laughs> huh? What? Leftovers. Leftovers. That's been what we've been having lately. You're really good That's at true. every night with the just warm stuff up. Yeah. Um, Mandy, thank you so much, Mandy. Uh, so sorry for all the problems in Georgia with that Marjorie Taylor. What's her uh, name? What's, yeah. her name? <laughs> What's her name? Marjorie uh, Trader Green. <laughs> Marjorie Trader Green. Very good. I like that. I like that. Uh, of course, the lovely and attractive uh, Mike Chisholm there. <laughs> and, uh, we still have your interview up on top of our page on GabNet. It was good. I'm getting a lot of good comments about it. If you haven't seen Alex on the latest, uh, one of the latest Letterman podcasts, it's a very, very good interview with him. Yeah. And I, I watched it. It was very good. Yeah. And Vernon Nunn, ladies and gentlemen, who is very nice to say that about me. Anyway, and finally, we go to our dear friend, Edward Berger. <laughs> who is our official sign off by saying that's all folks. <laughs> Bye everybody. I'll see you. Bye, Alex.